Welcome to World News to Philippines, here are our latest news. Following years of denuclearization talks, North Korea reaffirmed its nuclear status on Friday. Pyongyang, according to state media, has passed a new law authorizing the use of preemptive nuclear strikes to protect itself. It also prohibits any talks about denuclearization. North Korea's status as a nuclear state was first defined in the original 2012 law. It stated that, if a hostile nuclear-capable country invaded or attacked the country, it could retaliate with nuclear weapons. Now, the new law that was passed on Friday goes even further. If the Pyongyang detect an impending attack with weapons of mass destruction against them, they have the right to strike first. It appears to be a reference to a similar strategy aimed at North Korea that South Korea announced in July. In a speech, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un stated that this was a sign of a deteriorating situation, adding that their new law prohibits any further denuclearization talks and declaring the point of no return. President Joe Biden stated that his administration has offered to resume talks with Kim Jong-un, while South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol has offered Pyongyang economic aid in exchange for nuclear disarmament. Kim Jong-un said on Friday that he would never hand over the weapons, even if the country was subjected to a century of sanctions. Meanwhile in Ukraine, President Volodymyr Zelensky announced this month that his forces had recaptured 6,000 square kilometers 2,320 square miles of territory from Russia in a counteroffensive, marking Moscow's worst defeat in the nearly seven months of war. Since the start of September, our soldiers have already liberated 6,000 square kilometers of Ukrainian territory in the east and south, and we are moving further, Zelensky said in his daily address on Monday. On Monday, Ukrainian troops made more advances, pushing all the way to the northeastern border in some places and claiming to have captured many Russian soldiers as part of a lightning advance that forced Moscow to flee. According to a spokesperson for Ukrainian military intelligence, Russian troops are surrendering in large numbers because they understand the hopelessness of their situation. A Ukrainian presidential advisor said the country was running out of space to house prisoners of war. Alexei Arestovich, Ukraine's presidential advisor, did not specify the number of Russian prisoners held, but said the POWs would be exchanged for Ukrainian soldiers held by Moscow. The captured troops included significant numbers of Russian officers, according to military intelligence spokesperson Andrew Yuzov. While the counteroffensive was still in its early stages, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said on Monday that Ukrainian forces had made significant progress. The Ukrainian military said it had liberated more than 20 settlements in 24 hours, as blue and yellow Ukrainian flags fluttered over newly liberated towns. Armenia and Azerbaijan accuse each other of renewing hostility between the two long-time foes. The fresh combat between two nations killed at least 155 soldiers and fueled fears of a full-fledged war in the former Soviet Union country. On Wednesday Azerbaijan conducted a burial for soldiers killed in conflict with its border Armenia. It is reported that at least 50 of its troops have been killed since combat started early Tuesday, while long-time neighbor Armenia has lost 105 troops. The hostilities between the two ex-Soviet republics were the most severe since the 2020 conflict. On Wednesday morning, the adversaries accuse one other of launching a new round of shelling. Armenia's defense minister reported that Azerbaijan forces deployed combat drones and resumed bombardment with artillery and mortars, while Azerbaijan claims that Armenia fired in its position. Armenian footage purportedly shows an Azerbaijani soldier in an unspecified location. The two countries have been at odds for a decade over Nagorno-Karabakh, which is part of Azerbaijan, but has been under the control of ethnic Armenian forces backed by Armenia since the Nagorno-Karabakh war concluded in 1994. According to Armenia's deputy foreign minister, there is a clear risk that the hostilities would escalate into a full-fledged war, urging major nations to pay more attention to the dire situation. The 2020 war lasted six weeks, killed about 6,000 people, and resulted in a peace treaty. Russia is the dominant power broker in this region, with a military presence in Armenia, while Azerbaijan is supported militarily and diplomatically by Turkey, a NATO member. Both Washington and Moscow, who are already grappling with the Ukraine conflict, are advocating caution and a diplomatic solution to their heightened tensions. That's all for today's latest news, thank you for tuning in. If you like this video, feel free to like and share this video, also click the subscribe and the notification bell to get updated on our latest